Welcome to the Tecla template editor. I'm going to show you just a couple of things uh, about uh, the reporting in Tecla. This little icon up here opens up a list of available reports and your project manager will also have included some additional reports. Uh, I'd like to make it clear early in the game that you should not in any way alter these reports. Uh, if you are going to design some of your own reports, you should do it on your local machine. Uh, the uh, basic procedure would be to create your own model and uh, add a few parts to it and then proceed to design your template on your local computer. Okay, to begin with, I'm just going to show you um, how a report is used if you haven't used one before. Uh, it's quite simple. Um, Basically, the kind of reports that we might want to make would be, say, a list of beams or a list of columns. A uh, fabricator's called up and he wants some kind of an advanced bill. So what we can do is we can go up here and select, uh, say, just the steel beams, highlight all the beams like this, and you'll see that only the beams are highlighted, nothing else. Then we go to our report here and we can click on the advanced bill create just from selected and sometimes there is an existing report that was already made previously and we just overwrite that and this is the type of report you get it's a text based report and there you can see the quantity uh, the profile grade etc when I close this report and go over to the model folder I can look in the model folder and go and open up that text report that was created as a file and that would be done under my reports folder here and there's my advanced bill that I had just created and it looks very similar as you'll notice it has been opened up in notepad to get these reports to open up in Notepad, you need to associate the uh, XSR right here, this little file extension, with Notepad. And um, I'll create a little lesson on how to do that. It's quite simple. Okay, um, that's basically how you would use a report, but sometimes you have to create your own reports from scratch. So I'm just going to show you the very, very simplest kind of report that can be made. It's just a simple listing. So what we'll do here is we'll go to reports, drawings and reports, and we'll go to the template editor and just simply open that. And uh, you'll see that there's a work area here, this gray area here. Uh, there are some toolbars and of course there are some menus up top. You should go and explore these menus. One thing I'm going to tell you right away that you should do is go to your options and your preferences and then go to your work area and for your background select gray uh, it usually comes up as white and the reason we don't want white is because if we have yellow text laying on top of the white surface it's nearly impossible to read so I like to go with the uh, gray background so make sure you select your work area to be gray okay to begin with, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a new report. So we'll go File New, and you'll see we have an option here of Graphical or Textual. We're going to be interested in Textual. We'll look at Graphical reports in a later lesson. Um, we're just going to start off with a simple uh, list type of report. This window now opens. Uh, it's just the unnamed uh, template and if I double click on the background it gives me some properties of that template you'll see that it's 80 characters wide and 40 characters high which means it will only list 40 lines of information this 40 here is just simply the view depth here of your work area of your template work area notice also that there are these uh, one character borders uh, to the left, top and bottom. Uh, they take up 
just a little bit of room along the edge and you're not allowed to type anything in there. Of course you can create larger margins if you want to. Okay, so we're just going to leave that. Um, you'll see here this little toolbar. This is probably your starting toolbar. You'll see that there's a header. Then that's for the entire report and that would only appear once on the report at the very beginning. The page header uh, if you have a long report, you're going to want to have a page header so that you can give names to your columns. This one is going to identify the row and then page footer, which could be uh, including the page number usually. And then at the very end is the footer, and in that footer we usually reserve that for putting grand totals of uh, weights, uh, etc. for the entire report. Usually we start off just simply by clicking this header and you'll see it puts a red border. You can adjust that border by clicking on these little squares here and uh, dragging them down. As you can see I've enlarged it. I'm going to make this about that tall. Okay, I'm going to go now over to this toolbar here. This is where we can add graphics and uh, of course we can't add any graphics at this moment but we can add text and we can add a data value field. I'm going to start off with text only and I'm just going to type in here sample report. Okay, And I'll place it in here and the font that appears there, if I can just use my mouse to scroll in, appears as a courier type of font but we can double click on that and change its properties here. We can go in here and select other fonts. We almost always want our report to be done in Courier. So use Courier and then set this as your default. So check that little box there. So that would be your very very first step. So I have this sample report and of course when we create a report we want it to appear nice uh, for the viewer. We don't want to have something off-center so make sure that your report has a nice title on it here. Okay, uh, the other kinds of values that you can put in a header would be such things as the date. So let's go and grab a value. That's this little field here, value field. And when I click on it, it uh, shows me some sample text. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to put uh, the date in this opens up my attribute list. This is uh, usually a very huge list for when you're dealing with parts but when you're dealing with just the header you'll see that there are very limited number of uh, values that you can put into a header. So the kind of value I'm wanting right here is the date. So I'm going to take that date and uh, say OK to it and there the date appears. If I double click on the field, you'll see that I have a formula up here that says get value date and notice that it's the word date in capital letters and it is in quotation marks. We'll talk about that a later at a later time. The units, make sure you know which units you want to use. I like to use the year month date because it's pretty well standardized throughout the world and everybody will know that it's year month date as you well, well may know, date, month, year isn't always clear here in North America. So we'll put that in. Again, we have here a font. Um, I could type in Courier up here, C-O-U-R, and uh, comes to Courier New. I'll select it. There's only one size that we're going to use for Courier New. And I'll just set that as my font for everything else. Okay, one other thing that we like to put in here under as a text element would be a border of sorts. This is just a line and you can't go over 80. I'm just going to guess how many I've got here and as you can see how long it appears there. Okay, I'll put it right there. If I zoom into it you'll see it's just an equal sign. It appears to have come off the end but as you can see my screen doesn't always show the true uh, position of that. So you needn't worry about it if it looks like it's hanging over there. It really isn't. So I could now 
maybe take that and drag it over to the edge. And it sometimes take a little work here to get this thing. Um, this may be centered, so I should just double check. Okay, no, that's that's just fine. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And uh, we'll now move on. There are other things, of course, that you could put in here. Um, I could type in something like the name of our company or anything I want in here. Okay. I can also um, later on we'll show you in the um, when we do graphical type reports that we can put in pictures and lines and circles etc. But you can't do that in a text-based report. Okay, so the next thing we're going to put in here is a um, we're not going to bother with uh, the page header at this time. I'm just going to make a simple short list. Uh, we can always add the page header at a later time. Uh, click on here and from here this is extremely important that you pick the correct uh, element in here. So if we were making a report that dealt with assemblies such as a beam with clip angles or stiffener plates etc. Uh, and we wanted to list the beam and then the plates etc. Uh, we, would, we would probably start off with assembly. All I'm doing is I'm going to make a parts list. So I'm going to start with part. Okay, we'll talk about the levels of uh, hierarchy at a later time. Okay, you'll see again that it puts in a certain height and I'll just uh, refresh your memory here that these little boxes can be dragged. Now if I leave that blue box large like that or deep like that, it will allow me then to have very large spaces between each row. Uh, when I'm finished I'm going to be shortening this up like that. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll I'll start to put some uh, elements in here and go and grab. Now you'll notice that because I picked the part row here I now have part attributes available to me and all of these attributes here that you see okay and you'll see that there are some also that have expandable um, folders and phase for instance look at how many items alone are in phase and so these are all of the values that can be attached to your um, report. I'm just going to start off with uh, something very simple here. Simple like uh, I'm going to pick in the number, the number of objects, which I will select and say OK to that. And when I double click this you'll now see that it says number, get value number. Um, you should check this out um, when you add your fields to make sure that they have the correct meaning notice that if you put a, an item in here that refers to length uh, then it should say length. Now number doesn't uh, really fit into any of these because it's, it's kind of a generic item. So what we'll just uh, we'll, we'll do is we'll leave that. We don't want to hide it on output but you in some cases can hide it on output. And, and then basically how many characters? Well in this building we probably aren't going to have five you know, digits. So I'm going to drop that down to at least four. We're going to left justify it and we'll just close that. I'm going to zoom in and uh, I'm going to drag that up to the top row and uh, I'll leave a little bit of space there. Doesn't really matter for this example. Go grab another value and place it here and in this case I'm going to just pull in the profile name and uh, the profile will be down here under the letter P and uh, where, where do we have it here? Profile right there, just the profile. So again if I double click on that we'll see get value profile. Again it doesn't have any meaning, it's just text. Okay, now how about we go for length? I'll add in the actual length of the uh, part and that will go here. Where is it? Right here. 
right there. And I'll just uh, make sure that it has enough space. 8 usually is not enough. I like to go up to 14 case we have a figure like 151 foot 11 and 15 sixteenths. This will carry that. And sometimes you'll, you may need to go even higher if you have really long items. Okay, we'll just add uh, maybe one more like the weight. Because we don't need to, to add too many more just to give you the idea how it works. <coughs> and when we're doing weight in these reports, we usually select the gross weight. Gross weight. Okay. This one we should look at, and you can see it says weight. It says pound foot, so it's in the imperial. Uh, we don't need any decimals. We're going to go to the nearest pound. Length 8, I think that should be plenty. Notice that it's given it a field name. Okay. And also, I want to take note at this point in time that it says don't sum the values. Okay. I'm going to now just drag that up like that. I'm going to save it. And we do not want to save it in the template folder. The template folder is part of your uh, version 17 or 18 system. So what we really do want to save it in is the current working model. Now my current working model is called, I'll just close this here just so you can see it, it's called a template sample model. So I'm going to want to save this report in my working model. Then I can play with it all I want without bothering other reports. So I'll go in here and look for wherever it is. There it is. And I'll just call it uh, I'm going to put triple A sample report and save it. I've got some overlapping objects somewhere in this report. I don't quite know where they are um, but it's going to correct the problem. Okay. I'm going to leave the report open. I'll just drag it off my screen temporarily. And when I go and open up the reports list, there's my report. So this is the benefit of having the report stored in the current model folder. Okay, so what I now can do is I can, uh, now that I've got those beams highlighted, I can highlight, oh, I'll just make sure that they are highlighted, and I will now hit Create from Selected. And there we have one. And uh, that basically is not representing the entire report, of course. So what we'd have to do now is go back to this and figure out just why that number has come up that way. So um, we'll finish this off in our next lesson next week and uh, solve the problem of why that came up as one because as you will find when you're working with these reports you're always going to come up with uh, something that didn't work out the way you thought it should. So we're going to look at how you would go about debugging that in our next lesson. So that concludes this introduction and uh, we hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next week.